I got fired twice, once from Facebook and once from Mint.com. And it just made me realize like I, could, I didn't want to have my livelihood depend on one person. Like one person, Mark and Aaron literally were like, you're done today. I was like, that's crazy. That's crazier than, uh, people are like, it's so risky to start your own business. I'm like, it's risky to have a day job, especially if you don't like it. What's up, Noah? Good to have you on the show. <laughs> Good to be here. Good to see you, dude. This is awesome. Well, I've heard from so many of my friends that we need to have you on the show. So many people here uh, in Austin and, and uh, just in people I've connected with over the years have had so many great things to say about you. I was just hanging out with my buddy, Hal Elrod, and he was singing your praises uh, two days in a row, mind you. So uh, the timing couldn't, it couldn't have been better. <laughs> and I'm leaving the country for a bit. So this is, this is perfect timing. Nice to connect. I love how Elrod. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of people in the orbit, so it's kind of cool that like the constellations come together. Oh, it's so fun. I, I love the whole um, you know, small world phenomenon and how many friends you share, and uh, it, it always cracks me up when there's someone that lives in my own city, and for whatever reason we haven't had as much overlap. But you talk to you know 20 friends, and they all know you super well. So I'm I'm excited for more overlap. I agree. I always think it's interesting. You know, you like walk the streets and you don't know the people and then you get to meet someone like you now and so forth. I always think how it puts life in color. It does. It always makes just like a more interesting experience when you get to meet people. And you can do it just like this where I think I was talking to Hal and he's, I was like, Hal, I would like to go on another show, talk about the book. And he's like, you got to be Justin. And I was like, huh, that's cool. More color. Yeah, we've had uh, Hal and I have been friends for uh, probably 22 or 23 years, something like that. It's been a long time. So we're uh, huge fans, and uh, my wife and I are godparents to to his kids, wow. and yeah, we, we think the world of the Elrods. That is all. I just had an application. We put out applications for my child for Godfather. I love it. And yeah, so my congrats. Friend, this is like thank you, hot man. off the press. You're you're due really soon. We're doing July, but it was funny because my my buddy really wanted to do it. And I, you know, I guess in Jewish culture, we don't we've never had godparents. Okay. But he wanted to do it and I was like, I'm gonna make an application. <laughs> so he had to do push ups. He had to talk about like what would he do on dates if the guy was, you know, shows up late. Uh, it was pretty fun actually. I love it. A criteria. You got you got, you know, hoops you gotta jump through to earn this. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> I mean it, a lot of the things we appreciate in life we did have to earn. You know, I think that's a it's kind of a point of investing and business and all this stuff. It's you know, putting in the effort and then you you know, I do think we enjoy that reward more. Yeah. Well, I want to give you a shout out because before we even started this episode, you said, you know, hey, do you have kids? And we started talking about, you know, families and kids and uh, creating healthy boundaries around work and being the family man, a businessman second, right? Family man first, businessman second. And you had said, hey, what's one tip that you have? I have a collection and I'm asking all my friends that have kids, what's one tip? And I think that's awesome. And uh, you've probably assembled quite the list of tips over time, right? I did. Let me get here. It's on my phone on a notes. Um, ooh. So I asked also, yeah. So I asked my buddy Adam Gilbert from my body tutor.com. He said, Gilbert, don't break promises. Ooh, Cause I'm also good. asking for either rules or uh, values. Like what are your house rules or, or one thing you wish you would have known? So he said, we don't break promises. And then Gilbert's uh, don't quit. So I like that one. And then we always do greetings and salutations. Um, I liked yours, which is saying yes to other things. Saying yes to other things is saying no to the family. That was great. Credit my wife on that one. She's she's a smart woman. And sometimes it takes many times to get through to me. So uh, I've heard that one a few <laughs> times before it clicked. And I was like, oh, this this makes a lot of sense. And I, I didn't see it that way. My, my perspective was this sounds really fun. I want to do it. I know, uh, versus man. like, well, if I do this, then I'm not with the family. And how often do I want to not be with the family? I, I'm i seeing it now too, you know, like, oh man, I wanted to use the laptop during lunch and she's like, you just have to be with me during lunch. Yeah. <laughs> They're okay. Oh, quality time. My, my wife it's, loves It's good. I'm time. practicing, man. I'm definitely, not, I'm not guilty myself and I'm getting better uh, and better and better about that. And so I'm looking forward to, that. that's kind of like my big project, obviously, the kid, but just being present and doing a great job as a father. Well, I love it. I think that's awesome. And uh, I think it's good for us as businessmen to get yeah. into an area, an arena 
that we are not as skilled at, that we are not as comfortable in, that we have to get uncomfortable to learn. And it, it takes time, it takes practice, it takes reps, it takes falling down. So uh, it's not as easy as the, the calluses that we've built and the muscle memory we have from all the business <laughs> stuff, right? That is true. That is true. I mean, it's also, you know, a lot of times in business, also in life, is that others have done it. Yeah. Like, we don't have to be so innovative, you know, like, so go and find people like yourself in investing or myself in starting businesses or fathers who I admire and, and learn from them. Like I, I hit up, I think, you know, do you know Pat Flynn? Yeah. So I hit up Pat and I was like, Pat, what's your one advice? He's like, talk to the belly and rubber feet. And so, <laughs> well, like, I don't know. I'm just like, now every night I, I do my best to talk to our, my, my uh, wife's belly and then rub, you know, rubber feet or rubber belly and talk to it as well. And I'm like, thanks, Pat. You know, and again, I think that that can be applied in a lot of air arenas, which is, you know, like what you were saying about pickleball, like, that's right. Huh, maybe there's coaches that can act like, you know, give me my 10,000 hours or help me, you know, level up in this different areas. And so same thing with parenting. That's right. I, I always found it strange. Like my, my, my brother's like, I'm going to wing it. I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean wing it, dude? It's like, isn't this probably the most important thing you do in life? Like read some books, talk that's to right. some people, yep. get some coaching. That's right. hundred percent. Well, I'm excited to dig in. Um, you've got a new book that just launched and I want to get into that. It's called Million Dollar Weekend and, and I, I want to dissect that book. But before we get to it, I want to learn about how you got to where you are because you're a successful entrepreneur. You've had, uh, I think, mm. seven or eight different businesses that you've started. And many of these have been ideas that were created, you know, like what your book says, over the weekend and, and turned into a business. And so... Uh, but there was a time and a place where you were not an entrepreneur. You started out in the corporate world. You started out as an employee. And I, I'd love to learn, like, what was life before writing a book and being a, a well-known author, having a, a New York Times best-selling book? Uh, what was yeah. that like before you were an entrepreneur, before people knew your name? And then what was that progression into, you know, what, you, you know, what you've evolved to, what your business has evolved to today, Noah? Yeah. You, you made me think about my mother where when she goes to, she works out a lot at the gym. She loves body pump. And she goes, you know, my one son is a doctor. My other son, he's an entrepreneur, but he, I think he's doing okay. You know, they always have to say that when the, with the entrepreneur stuff. And, you know, I, I think what I used to feel is more shame of who I was and not acceptance of how I, I'd liked to live in this universe. And, you know, I love the title of your book, Lifestyle. I come from Silicon Valley where I was very lucky to be around this like elite environment, working for Zuckerberg directly, growing up literally a few miles from Apple headquarters, just like a very special environment. And it, it was like, if you're not doing everything working and, you're, and then you're failing. And I was like, I want to live. And they used to make fun of lifestyle businesses. I'm like, we're almost a hundred million dollar lifestyle business at AppSumo.com. That, that's a pretty good lifestyle for, for me and the team and our customers and partners. And uh, I think that's that's what I was dreamed of. I didn't know how I was going to get there though, and I, I wanted to, you know, I, I think the interesting thing is I wanted to trade receiving my W two to start giving out W twos, mm, <laughs> and love start that. giving out some. You know, most of the wealthiest people give out the W twos. That's right. And the ten ninety nines, but I never knew how I was going to get there, and I think I was ashamed. I didn't know how it was supposed to happen, so I just tried so many things over a decade, and I had a day job, like no advantages. I think this is a thing that people don't recognize in entrepreneurship is that universally everyone can win. You don't have to be tall. I don't even have hair anymore. You can have a lot of hair and win. You could be short and win. You could be a giant and win. It doesn't matter. That's the coolest part of business. And the other cool part that I think is amazing is you only need to do it once to, and only one time it has to work. That's right. How crazy is that? That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and as, it's one of those things where it's, it sounds so easy and, and so simple. <laughs> But the reality is that simple idea takes a lot of hard work and a lot of hours, <laughs> you know, a lot of falling down and getting bumps and scrapes. It, it probably takes a lot of years, yeah. but it is, if you unpackage it, it's that, I mean, the, the difference between simple and easy, right? It is simple, but it does take work. It does. And it could be fun. I think that's definitely not talked about enough. And what most people don't realize is that it's literally the best return you can ever make is starting your own business ever. Like AppSumo has literally started for $50. That's unbelievable. And last year I took them over, over $3 million personally, wow. which is insane. And I share that because I put it out publicly um, with CNBC, they verified it. 
And I was like, that's insane. What a return. Like stock market? Oh, your stock, you have, I bought NVIDIA. My, my dad bought me NVIDIA stock. <laughs> Great return. Not even close to this. Right. Like, oh, you bought crypto? Doubled? Wow. Doubled. Oh, I'm so happy. Like your own business? A trillion X. And the thing, though, that people miss out, and I think you said it really well, Justin, you do have to get started. And you have to start and start and start and start because it doesn't work. And most people like yourself have, have families. You got day jobs. You got, you're going international. So you don't have a lot of time. And so you have to really focus on the fundamentals. And then eventually, and, you know, everyone has a weekend. And eventually it does work. And the second part that people don't acknowledge is sticking with it. Yeah. And we've all stuck with different things. Like I've stuck with breathing now for 41 years. <laughs> I'm a huge into breathing. I like for somehow I just keep doing it. And I think that's the same in business, which is find something that people actually want. You're not gonna make a ton of money right away. AppSumo, which is a software deal site for people that are not as familiar. Uh, our first sale was 12 bucks. Yesterday, I just looked, we did 144,000 yesterday. Wow. But that that's, you know, 15 years later. So all wow. you have to do is find something people actually want. And there's a process I teach a million dollar weekend uh, about all these things. And then you stick with it. Now, in terms of, I guess, before and after my life, I, I got fired twice, once from Facebook and once from mint.com. And it just made me realize like I, could, I didn't want to have my livelihood depend on one person. Like one person, Mark and Aaron literally were like, you're done today. I was like, that's so crazy. crazy. And, and that's crazier than uh, people are like, it's so risky to start your own business. I'm like, it's risky to have a day job, especially if you don't like your day job. Well, and you were early on too. And sometimes early on in these companies, you, you know, you get equity. Sometimes if you're cut loose early, maybe you haven't invested at all. So, I mean, there's a lot on the line when you're, you are number 30 at Facebook and number four at Mint, right? Yeah. Facebook when I would have been a billionaire. So that stings. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I'm okay. <laughs> but the event when I only would, only would, would have lost a few million. But I, I think when a, the, the, the same thing for anyone out there was just starting and looking at, okay, what am I already getting paid for? What do I like doing? What's in my zone of influence that I could actually do today? And this applies whether you're a doctor like my brother or whether, you know, people like you and me who are maybe in a more variety of like tech or money finances. And it's, it's an amazing process. And I think what, one of the things for Million Dollar Week and I've seen people change their lives is now, not how. Mm. And like, get started because people are thinking, Justin, I don't got ideas. I'm not risky enough. I'm not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I'm not in this one city. That's where everything's happening. It's like, great. That's advantages. You can compete where others aren't and you could get started right now. And I'm seeing it over and over where people just start taking action today, like during the show. And I think that was, you know, in terms of my journey, I kept trying. I think it's relatable to everyone where I didn't have some, you know, rich family. I had a middle-class family. But I started things and I kept starting things and eventually, but eventually something worked, but it was so many things that did not, mm. but each thing kind of leveled me up a bit. Like I did a conference and I met people. I was like, oh, I like conferences. And I did a few more of them, made money. I was like, oh, this is cool. And I did it while I had my day job. I was never risky. Uh, only when my side hustle started working, like at Mint uh, was the first one where my, my games company started working. So I, then I quit, which is when I hit my freedom number. That's everyone has one. It's the number where you can actually do the thing you want to do. Yeah. That's powerful. Everyone's going. My, mine was 3,000. Okay. And I talk about that a lot. And it's funny. You got to be careful because lifestyle creep kicks in. And, and if you're not careful, it's going to surpass it. You're going to be there. And then all of a sudden you're not. So, uh, but I do think it's important <laughs> to find that number and, and get there as quickly as you can, because it yeah. gives you a lot more peace of mind around starting a business when, you know, it's not uh, life or death that way. You've got the finances still covered. I, I mean, for me, that was... I needed breathing room when I started, you know, my first big business, I've started several smaller businesses, but we started yeah. a big business that um, is a single family home maintenance company called Stellar. But because hmm. I had financial freedom, it became really easy to jump in and not have to worry about anything else. And um, some of the other businesses that I had started, I did need to worry about it. I didn't have my financial freedom yet. And so I think that decisions that were made were out of this framework of, can I afford it? Can I not afford it? Or I was clouded by finances versus, hey, you've got that solved. Now it becomes a lot easier to be creative, to, um, you know, to, to kind of put more chips in, to, to push them in. Yeah. And, you know, these businesses that do get larger all start with one customer. That's why in the book, I talk about getting your first dollar and people can Venmo request me at Noah Kagan. And I'll be your first and then go get your second. And then people are like, well, yeah, these million dollar business, like they all started the same way. 
your cleaning company, Stellar, had one cut. Who was your first customer? Mm. Do, you, do you remember who your first uh, customer? My was? first customer. Well, it depends on on which business. Um, well, the Stellar, the the home cleaning one. Or the... Yeah, we we had a, a a small. So that was a you know it's a single family home maintenance company, and so we had a smaller operator that we took on. Um, that I'm likely not supposed to use names, but just institutional investors. We ended up getting some pretty big household names that came on pretty early on. But our first one was a smaller uh, client and someone else had kind of messed up some of their jobs and we uh, swooped in to be able to kind of uh, clean up the work that they had done, thinking that we might have an opportunity with them. You know, I guess I used to think, and this is true for everyone out there, that you know the things that were actually good at, can we embrace it and accept it? And so I was always starting. And you know, the same thing with AppSumo, I started another business while I had a day job. I was consulting for a dating company. And I, I, I think people miss out on the problems. Everyone's got problems. Those are the best businesses to solve because at least you have a happy customer, which is yourself. And I wanted to solve this customer that I, this problem I kept hearing over and over, which is how do you get people customers? And specifically, I wanted to focus on software for small business owners like myself. That was something I was excited about. And, and you while came I had a from that job. space too, right? What's that? You um, came from that space. I guess yours was, you know, kind of uh, B to C, but right. Well, I think what, when people get started, and this is the thing, you're not going to become a million overnight. But if you follow the work, if you follow me on a weekend, also read Lifestyle Investor, once you get all the money, you will become a millionaire. I am seeing it. I know it works. And... The reality, though, is that you're not going to get the million overnight, but if you can find some people want and then stick with it long enough, you will get a million dollars. Yeah. And it was interesting with AppSumo and now putting that together, that process into a into a book, I'm seeing these people. Like, it's it's been crazy. This guy messaged me on Reddit, and I did an AMA there. And he's like, yeah, hey, I've read the book, and I messaged 14 people about my health coaching business I've been curious about, and I'm always excited about it. I have three paying customers today. I was wow. Like, Hell yeah. Or someone read the book, uh, this guy, David, and I don't know him, but in the book, I talk about law of 100, which is just like, how do you not quit too soon? How do you not give up too soon? And he just built a website that you can track the thing you do a hundred times. And they launched it. I, I love like, it. And I love crap, that you're, cool. you're willing to be a first customer. I think that's really cool that you're just like, hey, openly, hey, you start your business. I'll be customer number one. I think that's awesome. I, I'm not getting enough of these requests. And, and <laughs> no, by the way, that's I'm actually getting a lot. You're, you're offering it up and you're not getting it because, and, and it goes to the point that we talked about earlier that most people overthink it. It's like, well, all the, all the lights down the road have to be green before I go. I have to have this whole, you know, I, this whole plan and everything has yes. to go perfectly versus it's all going to change anyway. You, you think it's going to be one way and then you go do it and you're like, whoa, it's totally different. And there's all these problems I didn't know about. And you only can solve them because you actually moved forward and did it and, you know, got your feet, yeah. you know, messy, got your hands. Well, messy. I think what, what, what you asked, which is interesting. And mo you know, the reason I do the dollar thing is because most people never get to a million because they never get one. And after one, you get two yep. and then you get three. And then after two, three, four, you get three, four, five. <laughs> The, the thing that's really interesting about for all of us is that as you get started, that's where you get confidence. And each of these things levels up. So like at, at Intel, I was like, I hate a cubicle. I'm not going to ever do a, a job like that again. At Facebook, I learned how to build products. And then I started conferences. I was like, oh, I kind of don't like conferences, but I like building web products. All right, Mint marketing. Oh, I like this marketing thing. Then I built these games and I was like, oh, I hate games. And I did payments for games. We evolved, but again, being it, you're never going to learn to swim sitting outside the pool. So you have to start and then you get a little scared, but at, guess what? After you do it, you have success. You can swim. And then doing the, the payments company, I realized that they didn't care about payments. They cared about customers. So like all that was the culmination that led to the beginning of AppSumo in 2010. Mm -hmm. But if I never started trying things and figuring out, is there a formula for this? I would have never figured it out. And most people just think they're not ready and they are. And, and they think that yeah. they think there's a guru or some secret stuff. There's processes, yeah. but you don't need more books. You don't need more courses. You don't need more money. You just need yourself and, a, and the belief that you can do it, which you can. And it's tough if you're just dipping your toe in, because if the water's too cold, you know, that it, you're not going to get in the rest of the way. You should just jump right in, <laughs> right? Get, get your whole body in, go after it and, and see what happens. And if it doesn't work out, you... Uh, you, you can reiterate it. You can evolve 100%. it. You can try something different, but you might as well know for sure. Get a, de a, a definitive yes or no. Well, it's it's like pickleball. You know, I know you're you're semi pro. You're going <laughs> pro this year. 
I'm but working hard to get good. Like, <laughs> you know, the business is a, is a language and a skill that you can be fluent in, mm -hmm. just like pickleball. That's right. And your pickleball today, how different is it than the last time? You know, when you first started. Infinitely, yeah. It is. And so when people can start looking at business as a gym, as a, a skill to develop, that you practice it. All right, I'm going to ask a customer for a dollar today. I'm going to post on social media right now. Can I help anybody with their lawn care? Can I help anybody with their cleaning? Can I help anybody with their personal finance? And they're like, oh, it didn't work. Let me ask again. Let me try again. Let me try again. And eventually, as a skill like pickleball, you get better. And, you know, there's just common things I see. I saw a guy um, send me an email and he says, hey, I saw that there's a competitor in my space. Should I not do the business? And I'm like, it's practice. <laughs> just keep practicing it's like it's like yep. saying there's no more restaurants in your city because one opened up yep competitors in every space if there aren't <laughs> there will be it's just a matter of time and generally yeah, when and you're you starting a business you are a competitor you're just thinking of a better way to do it you're solving different problems or more problems uh totally true and i think a lot of times if you haven't heard of the competitor that's an opportunity mm -hmm. and it's also figuring out maybe it's your own flavor of it like for me i never personally read a business book that i could have given myself when I was starting at Intel, 23 years old, 22, that's like, yo, if you want to be an entrepreneur, here's the book. It never existed. So I was like, well, I'm going to test it. This is what we teach in, in the book. Let me test it with a blog post. Blog post went viral. I was like, huh, you know, one day I think this will do really well as a book. So I had confidence, the same thing uh, as well. That's awesome. So you had AppSumo. I think you said you started in 2010. It was just you. You grew it over time. Um, Give us an idea of where it was versus where it is today. Where where are you in sales? Where are you in number of employees? I'm sure it's like a two different companies, right? A night oh, and man. a day. There's a lot of inflection points in our journey, and everyone's everyone's got it, and everyone can you know do hard things. I think that's what you know what this book taught me recently is that we all can do a hard thing, and the reward is on the other side of the hard thing. Yeah. So Absumo, though, it started just kind of as a joke. It wasn't started like, and I think people miss out on this. Like, I got to have a million dollar. It's got to be, it's like, dude, chill out. Like, go help one person. It's fun. So I, I just started with, at my buddy Neville's place. Uh, I was starting in San Francisco in a basement. And then like once a month, I would start doing these bundles of software deals. And I got inspired by Mac. There's Mac software deals at a site called Mac Ice. And I was like, I'll do it for web software. So the first year, and let me, I think this is probably the most important point of, of that story is one we, I tried other businesses with the same problem that did not work. Mm. So I tried a software review site called Software Taco. That didn't work. I tried a co-registration software thing. That did not work. But the third one I tried, which was AppSumo, worked really well. And that's what I teach people. Like, you don't have a lot of time. You have to find if these things work. And that makes life easy. Uh, first year, we did 300000 and be And I, I, it was me and a customer support person. And then my CTO at the time joined... 10 months in and he worked for free for a year Wow! just to be a part of it. Well, even 300,000 year one is incredible. It's insane. It is. It's insane. And I, I say that not as a brag at all, but I've tried so many other things that had zero. Right. And that, that's Ball huge drop. because yeah. you didn't let the beat down of that deter your desire to figure out one that did work. Right. I, I love that. Well, I think if you, what, I, what most people don't realize is that this dream life they're imagining is possible. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe it, but if you can kind of have like a little bit of a belief and for me, the fear of a job was so strong, <laughs> the fear of having to spend a lot of my life doing things I don't want was Going so strong. I was, like, I was like, I'm never going to go back to that. And so that's what kept me going. And I think a lot of times I'm getting rejected and I'm, and this is the part I'm still getting rejected. I'm still getting rejected all the time, but you're only seeing the ones that happen. Yep. And, and you you had made a comment yeah. earlier about, hey, if you just keep you know, chugging along, you'll be able to build up a million dollars. I actually want to just comment real quick. It's actually not even that hard. Uh, you don't even have to get to a million dollars. Uh, something that one of my favorite stats is that before I was a millionaire, I had financial freedom. And it does not take a million dollars in the bank to do it. Now you can, you can work up to that. It doesn't take a million dollar business to do it, but if you do it right, you can, and you can work up to it. But the the point here is you got to start. You just have you to start. You have to start. And you got to get around people that are doing it. So it's not weird and you're not the only one and you can glean ideas 
from them and processes and protocols and you know the the whole works you can start thinking more like the people that are getting the results that you desire to have but for them it's it's a regular everyday part of their life yeah it's interesting that the norm is that and you can i love your your point you could be a time millionaire for a lot less than a million bucks that's right for so for me with AppSumo, that that part yeah it was first year was three hundred thousand. it was pretty much me last year i think we finished the year around 80 million dollars gross sales and there's about 100 people on the team it's incredible 15 years later bootstrap that's incredible and, and never never having taken any vc money no okay no, not that's all a beautiful I just, thing yeah i didn't want to i didn't want another dollars boss. the right? only boss i have is my baby mama that's the only boss i have <laughs> <laughs> that's good you recognize and, uh, that <laughs> i would say the other thing that, that that's a nuance of our story because people might think it's not relatable and i'm like it's 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 accessible worldwide for free everyone can start a business and you only need one hit it's the only sport with one hit wins but you need to swing a lot to actually get the hit that's going to win that's right and i would say that the nuance in app sumo that people need to be mindful of is you have to be in billion or million or trillion dollar opportunities and what i mean by that is people are working really hard on small markets which is fine and, and i was the example I, I that i thought of recently was my masseuse we, I, I had her come over to massage my girlfriend it's 140 bucks which is pretty expensive but pretty nice to have someone come to your house i was like that's seven thousand backs to be a million dollars that's yeah. gonna take you a lifetime that's right but if you start thinking about the market size or the market opportunity maybe if she hired people if she sold coaching if she you know maybe some of your blueprint how that she can mirror from you and that changes the, the scope of the opportunity software maybe hmm. then you start thinking like okay what market am i actually playing in because I'd, I'd say for app sumo i some percentage significant percent of her success is that software just got bigger i just played i put my surfboard in a really huge wave that was just doing really well well, and it's also the wave that is the future, right? So I think, you know, one of the things I talk about is finding invisible deals. So this is the third commandment Oof. of my 10 commandments, and it's finding these invisible deals. Well, what are they? Love it. Well, we don't know what they are, but we can guess what they are. We can pay attention to, you know, what the millennials are doing. What are they doing now? What, what you know, how do you see them spend time and shop and uh, work and figure out, you know, what that trend looks like? So sometimes the ideas and not always but sometimes the idea is catching it early enough before it's mainstream and then it becomes mainstream right but if you're already playing in a space that has a big wave like software we already know software companies have some of the highest valuations out there uh we already know that the tech you know tech enabled anything is kind of the wave of the future so <laughs> software technology something with some sort of recurring revenue um you can, you can game it to a certain degree if you know the sandboxes you want to play in that have more sand. I, I like that. I, the two comments I would make, I'll give some examples, but also play in the sandbox you understand. Right? And I, and I th if you're just doing it for practice and reps, great. But I see so many times people are like, I'm going to build a social media following in an AI and I'm going to try to launch something later. And it's like, okay, have you built any social media? No. Do you, do you use a lot of AI? No, but it seems really hot. I'm like, I think you can do it. So do that. And what's your day job? What have you gotten paid for in the past? What do your friends do? And so you can do it another way. There is an easy way. And, but people want to make it harder on themselves because they think they have to, and they don't. I mean, just to give you some examples of what I believe will be million dollar businesses. Um, I, I think what you said, Justin, the way I heard it, and I agree is it has to be non-obvious and become obvious. Yes. Like when I started AppSumo, there was 10 software products online. 10. Now there's a hundred thousand. Wow. So the idea there is like, can you see even, and I, I try to just think six months, people are sweating like six years. Well, I don't know. I did just do a 10 year guess of my life, which was pretty fun this morning. Like, where do I think I'll end in 10 years in 2034? I was like, well, that's normally I haven't thought that far ahead, but in business, if you can think six months, where will it be? And so too, that, uh, I saw literally yesterday, Sam Parr, who was on your show, he launched samslist.co. I think there's going to be, a, I don't know if a billion, because I don't think he'll run it that way, but million dollar business. And it's basically uh, a Yelp just for accountants and tax people. And I was like, I love it. And, and what I love about it is that what are the problems that suck for you? And even for myself, I hate, like right now I'm trying to change tax people. I have a bookkeeper. It's super annoying. Great. That's a business opportunity. Uh, sure the other is. one that we're, we're building at AppSumo 
And again, these are all things that now we, we understand and we're the customer, which is makes it off, you know, more interesting. Not just more interesting, we have a deeper understanding and it's easier for us to succeed in it, uh, is DocuSign. And we were like, why are we paying monthly for DocuSign? We don't even use it that often. So we we're like, can we pre-sell it? So I sold $3,000 worth to my friends, to people who sent me DocuSigns. And then now, because I know people want it, we spent the last, I think it's been about three weeks building it because we know we have customers. And so we're launching it next week. That's awesome. And I, I'm pretty sure that'll be a million dollar, if not larger business. So what are all the services of AppSumo? So AppSumo is Groupon for Geeks is kind of our old thing. Now it's more of a software marketplace for solopreneurs. It's probably the easiest way to think about it. So you can get software deals for tools you need. So instead of paying, you know, $29 a month for Calendly, you can pay $29 for life and have tidycal.com. That, that's, that's awesome. That's AppSumo in a nutshell. Right now, it's really cool. Like every week we launch new products. So it's a lot of up and coming or undiscovered software tools. So even if people don't buy it, they can like, okay, what's trending? What's happening? Like AI writing tools, super, super popular. Um, a lot of like databases, a lot of video stuff. Uh, and so for people out there that have small businesses, they can act like a biz big business, but at small business pricing with all of our stuff is pay once and you get it forever. Oh, I love that. By the way, I don't know why I'm not using AppSumo. I'm going to buy this right when we're done. So now, yeah. so AppSumo is the marketplace. Okay. So I think sometimes we got to work on our branding. We, we basically find the latest and greatest tools, get an gotcha. insane price and then promote it on AppSumo.com. Love it. We should probably sponsor you. I like it. Let's do it. <laughs> that sounds fun. Well, this is, I mean, our audience is, this is totally speaking our language, right? We're, we're gung ho in this space and, you know, finding apps that make us better, faster, smarter um more resourceful so i love that question for prices. you uh th those <laughs> of you that are listening you have no idea what i'm looking at those of you that are watching this show you can tell exactly what i'm looking at you got a big old taco in the background which i love because my favorite food at least i think that's a oh, taco um, it is a taco my favorite food are breakfast just uh, favorite way to start the day breakfast tacos um mm. Mm. tell me what is uh and, and I noticed in your bio that you love Taco Deli. We'll give a nice shout out to Taco Deli. I'm friends with the owner, great guy. Um, what is it about tacos that makes you want to have that on your background? Because I love it. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, shout out. Do you know Roberto? Uh -huh. The other guy. I Roberto. love Roberto. Yeah. I've tried to like invest in them for like 20 years. <laughs> That's because they don't is need the money. No. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I just admire him as an entrepreneur. I really admire him. Yeah. I played pickleball um, I admire with him, their by the way. So much. He, Roberto's really good at pickleball. Oh, maybe I come pickleball with y'all. All right, we'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. Um, I, I think the, the concept for me is more, how do you have fun with business? So like a million dollar weekend, for instance, I read, I, I, while, while we're working on the book, you know, make a product that you're excited to tell people about. I put a, a, a graduate, a certificate degree for people. That's awesome. Like I was just like, I've never read a book where I, I get a certificate at the end. That's or, awesome. In the acknowledgement section, I put, you can write your own name in. Because, you know, you ever read a book, you're like, I helped that person. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> they All bought right, the I'm, book. I, I love it, man. Uh, that's so cool. You know, and so I think that the taco thing, if you go to AppSumo.com, uh, to our site, and this is an interesting thing, too. Because once you get something going, you're kind of trying, you're generally doing something new, and you're okay to take risks because there's not much to lose. It's not even a risk, but you're doing things where you don't have as much uh, opinions. And so when I started AppSumo, I just put tacos instead of stars. Oh, I love it. That's I just thought good. it was funnier. And I was like, yeah, that's just cool. Like that's it's five, so like you go to AppSumo, we have, it's always taco ratings. And in our businesses, how do you have fun with it? Cause that's also what people talk about. You know, they want to taco about it. Huh? So, <laughs> you know, if you put these little, like, it's not to do it, it, it has to be authentic. Like if someone went and did a bunch of taco things and they're not, I eat just a tremendous amount of tacos. So <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, that that's me. It doesn't mean, and everyone should figure out what works for them. Maybe it's be more serious. Maybe it's maybe it's I don't know barbecue, or maybe like they would never do a certificate because they but they have really amazing graphics. And I, I think that's what I was sharing earlier in my own journey, which was I think I used to be ashamed that I liked starting businesses, and and meaning that I get fired or I'm like starting and I'm starting and I'm starting. And eventually, now I just wrote a book. I was like, well, let me just because it seems like that's actually what people really want help with. I love it. So tell us about how the book. I've actually done it successfully. Because because this is awesome. It's just the concept of it is great because you're basically saying, yes, you too can start a business. You can do it over the weekend. 
And if that business works great, if not reiterate and, and, you know, find another idea that does, but you started many over just a weekend. So tell us the, the impetus for the book and, uh, you know, I guess any key points that you want people to grab from it. Uh, cause I'd love to have people get your book. I think we need more entrepreneurs in the world. I think that, uh, you know, we're, we're solving problems, uh, for society as entrepreneurs. I think the, the marketplace for entrepreneurship is what solves problems. I, I think what's amazing about entrepreneurship is that you, it's literally one of the best tools to create your dream life. Like where, where are you going totally. this week? Uh, going to, uh, Riviera Maya. Yeah, living these dope ass lives. And, and I, your point earlier too, you don't have to be a millionaire to do it. It definitely makes it a lot easier. And, and sure. I was never really taught. And I don't think people are really encouraged to enjoy money. Like we're like 99% of content is make it 0% except the fake people on Instagram is how to enjoy it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, And totally. I, I there are it, a few books on it. Die with Zero, one of the only ones, right? Which is a banger of a book. I love that book. Heck and, yeah. And I think entrepreneurship is just such a cool way to learn who you can become. No doubt. It's just such an amazing oh. way where you, you're, you know, you're really starting things. You're asking people. That's what I teach in the, you asked one of the key things. There's so many business books out there. There's even this place called Harvard. You may have heard of it. <laughs> and yeah, the place that a lot of people think is a university, but it's, uh, really kind of just, a uh, an endowment of, you know, it's more of a money management vehicle. Yeah. That really doesn't uh, have to pay much, if anything, in taxes. Is that it's the, crazy, man. the same Harvard we're talking about? Yeah, right? we are. And so with, with an educational arm. Yeah. I mean, this, this, this whole starting business stuff, it's just such an amazing way to, to one, create a dream life that people can actually live, which I believe they can realize it's not as far away. I think people don't realize that your life that maybe you're a little frustrated in, or it's not as good as you want. It's probably better than you think to start. Let's just start there. And two, this life where. Like I spent half the year living in Spain. It's not, mm, it's not that expensive. That. My apartment there with my girlfriend is a thousand fifty euro. That's cheap. My house here is more expensive, but my house, that's so you could live <laughs> there super cheap and you could do a podcast business. You could do a service business. And the idea that you have to do it like, oh man, I'm a financial advisor. You don't have to financial advise. You can hire these other people, trade your money for their time. And that's right. I think entrepreneurship, everyone can do it. Everyone needs to do it. Because if you have a day job and you, you have a family, if that day job goes, what happens? So I would definitely right. create the entrepreneurship. So if it's selling things on eBay or Etsy or Facebook Marketplace, wherever that is, services, software, whatever that, at least you have that option. And the, yeah, the second thing I'd say- Start as a solopreneur and then build something bigger from there, right? Get proof of concept and then build a business, build people, build systems. Yeah, and it's fun. I mean, it's such a cool way to learn. Like I, I think a lot of times in companies and day jobs, you learn how to be in a day job. And you don't even learn skills necessarily external to your day job. You learn how to do a function for that company. And when you start your own business, like I started AppSumo, I'm like doing customer support. How do you do a website? <laughs> you know, how do you program? My first website of AppSumo, which was 50 bucks, it was a PayPal button and my Gmail. That was our whole tech stack. And uh, the, the other thing I, I got to highlight from, from Million Dollar Weekend is that the thing, if, if there's Harvard and all these books and courses and all this stuff on entrepreneurship, then how come everyone can't do it? That's the, that's like the, that's the riddle. And, and the two things that I identified after myself and literally 10,000 of other people is no, they just don't get started like you, like you started, you started, you started, you started, and eventually some things work. And the second part that's so critical is asking the second, just unknown thing that no one really touched upon. And yes, there's a process that you, people need to follow, but how do you get comfortable asking, come on my show, be my wife, <laughs> be my customer, <laughs> come work for me. That, that's an interesting one to actually, Hey, I need you to come be an employee. Are you going to find the best people if you don't ask? Cause if you don't ask for things, you're not going to get it. And the more that, right. and that, you know, the more that we can practice these things, which are all skills that we can all get better at, just like pickleball, it's all skills that get better that you can start turning yourself into actually a fluent money-making speaker. That's awesome. I love it. So where can people learn more about you and where can they find your book? Uh, million dollar weekends, wherever books are sold. I have it at million dollar weekend.com is probably where you can learn about me first chapter for free. I think you guys are giving out like one of our, uh, like, uh, resources, uh, that has a lot of tutorials, uh, but everything at million dollar weekend.com or at Noah Kagan, uh, anywhere online. 
I love it. I love it. What would you say is just the one thing that you want to make sure uh, our audience here today leaves with? Venmo requests me for a dollar at Noah Kagan. And my point here is if you made it to the end of the show, which most people don't, you're, you're one of the, you know, I, you're one of the, the chosen. I think the question I keep wondering for the audience is, as I talk is who's the one person that's going to do it? Cause it's available. All you have to do is do it today and get started right now. And that's why I say just Venmo request, fine, get one buck. And then you realize like, oh wow, maybe I have been holding off something I can do. And I actually can create this dream life. So I would start with that $1 for me and then see what else you can do today. Yeah, you've got a customer built in that, that builds some confidence, <laughs> right? I love that. Yeah. Well, I really enjoy having guests on that just have such a unique take on life, uh, a, a different background than what most people have. I feel like you've done some really cool things here. Noah, I really want to thank you for your time. Um, and also thank you for just injecting some fun, some creativity, some humor, which I think we need more of in life, right? You do a great job of that. And I really like to end every podcast episode I do with a question, just one simple question to our audience. So if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, the question for you today, which is the same as I ask every single week, is this, what is one step that you can take today to move towards financial freedom and move towards a life that you truly desire, one that's mm -hmm. on your terms, not by default, but rather by design? Today is really easy because you've got a bunch of low-hanging fruit from Noah. So pick one thing that you learned from Noah and move forward. So um, yes, I highly recommend buy his book. We need more entrepreneurs in the world. Million Dollar Weekend for all of us. It'll be really cool to see what we can create, especially from you know our our audience. I know that there are a lot of people here that either A, need to start their first company or B, need to start another company. And we can worry about, you know, pulling you out of that company later. We talk a ton about that, uh, you know, in our community. So uh, thanks so much, Noah. And I'll check all of you next week.